This is an update to our Relay Lab. There's actually two parts to this laboratory uh, and a number of subparts, but the initial paper is just a brief introductory about relays. Uh, there's lots about relays on the web. Those are three of the websites I encourage you to look at. How Stuff Works, uh, All About Circuits, and of course Wikipedia. Lots of information about relays. The relays we're going to use, there's a few of them. Uh, this is a, a Zettler um, 692. You may or may not use this relay, but I like this relay as a pre-lab because there's lots of information on the relay itself. This one's designed for circuit board operation. So follow the instructions in this handout. You'll do pull in, drop out. Uh, voltage measurements, voltage and current measurements, and then we'll move on to actually using the relay in a circuit. Here is another relay that I, I help, I usually give out to the students. We have lots of them and they've uh, been around a long time. Sometimes these are called ice cube relays because they're clear and you look and look inside. Uh, there's always four main parts to a relay. Uh, inside we can see the, the white uh, wrapping, that's a coil. This happens to be 12 volt. You can see it's even printed on there. Along with the coil, there's the moving armature, which is that piece of metal, that silver piece of metal. And, uh, the, and you can see the spring, which holds the, the uh, pulls the coil or the armature back in position. There's the spring on the left. And then, of course, the contacts, which are the switches uh, that are uh, activated by the relay. What's nice about using these uh, ice cube relays, I'll connect some voltage here and we'll watch the coil action uh, occur. If you're, uh, and there's lots of videos on this on, on YouTube. But if I activate it, you can see the relay move. And of course, when I de-energize, the uh, armature, the spring on the back, is pulling the uh, armature back up to the top. So it activates and um, let's go. And then the switches are those silvered contacts we see there and that's where the switching action takes place. This happens to be a, a dual form C relay And you can uh, look at the data sheet, but you can also see that the, the white wire there represents the common, and then the two contacts that are changed. The one, of course, on the top that is made without energizing is the normally closed, and the second one is the normally open. And when we activate the relay, of course, they change, right? So as that uh, armature is pulled down. So experiment with that relay first uh, if you don't have much familiarity with relays and then move on to the lab. Now in the main part of the lab we're going to build a little motor starter associated with relay. And uh, we have actually have three parts in this lab. We're going to look at relay logic and ladder diagrams, uh, understand a basic motor starter, and then move on to a forward reverse motor starter. So what does a relay diagram look like? This is a relay ladder diagram. It's generally shown without the, the power supply for the control. In this case, we have a switch and then a, a CR to represent the control relay coil. In a circuit, uh, when you build it, you'll have to supply power. Most relays are DC, but there are some AC. Some are polarity sensitive, most are not, but you need to look at your data sheet. So this is pretty simple circuit. When I activate the switch, I activate the relay, and then of course the switch contacts are changed from normally normal position to the activated or energized position. Um, here's the typical symbols that we see in a relay diagram, the relay coil, the contacts or the switches themselves, normally open, normally closed, a pilot light or indicator light that's useful for us. Um, there's a single pole, uh, single throw switch that we sometimes use in the diagrams. And then we're going to use a push button or momentary operation type switch. 
Uh, the normally closed is shown with the connection already made and the normally open waiting for the connection to be made. You'll see other kinds of circuit elements like circuit breakers in these diagrams also. So the motor starter circuit that we're going to build initially, on the left hand side we see the ladder diagram. We see a stop switch in series with the start switch in series with the coil of the control relay. Now uh, on the bottom rung of the ladder we see a switch contact that's a normally open. CR-1 represents that it comes from this relay or it's controlled by that relay. The dash 1 just means it's one of the set of contacts. Each one of those we can uh, actually have, we can use CR2 which we'll use in the motor circuit. And then the pilot light is put in parallel with the coil to show when the coil is activated. You need to make sure that the coil voltage and the pilot light are matched up and that's usually the voltage of the supply. So if we have a 12 volt relay we need to have a 12 volt pilot light. Now most of the time in these laboratories we use a resistor LED combination for our pilot lights. So um, if you use a red LED that's a little less than 2 volts when turned on, you pick an appropriate current rating for the LED. 10 milliamps is good enough. Most modern LEDs can be seen quite easily on 5 milliamps, but 10 is a good easy number. So if we have 2 volts across the LED and we have a 12 volt source, that leaves 10 volts, 10 milliamps around uh, 1 K ohm associated with that uh, uh, resistor LED combination. In the controlled circuit, we're going to use a little motor and we're going to use a separate contact from the relay. This is CR-2, so that's a normally open, the second set of contacts. We can use single pole, single throw relays in this case, or we can use double pole, double throw. Since we're going to use two independent uh, con contacts, we'll use a, um, a, a dual relay. In this case, we'll use a double pole, double throw. Now you'll notice that the circuitry between the control side and the motor side are completely independent and this is one of our great assets of a relay is the physical and electrical isolation between the control circuit and the circuit being controlled. So there's no electrical connection um, and so the key is, is that this power supply over here, the motor, can be completely independent and usually much higher voltage than the uh, control side. This might be anywhere from 5, 12, 24 volts are common and over here we might have as much as 120 volts, uh, 240, 480 even can be controlled because the relay itself uh, doesn't matter in terms of the, um, the uh, input and output here or the control side. Uh, yes, voltage will matter in terms of how you wire it, but uh, in terms of the operation, there's no, no difference in the using low voltage or high voltage. In our case, we're going to use a simple 12 volt circuit to control our motor. So the motor we are using is one we will use in a couple different labs. It's a simple 12 volt um, motor used in a um, you know copier type operation. Uh, in the circuitry, we'll, uh, we just have two wires to connect up for the motor control. Uh, in this case, the terminals are here. Operation will be something like this, but uh, we just turn it. One great thing about this kind of um, uh, motor, this is a permanent magnet DC motor that we'll use otherwise in uh, other circuits, is that it's very easy to reverse the motor, so all you have to do is simply reverse the applied power, and so it reverses the motor, so that'll be useful in our circuit. Alright, now we'll move on to the actual circuit implementation. Now the circuit we have uh, that we built in from this schematic or ladder diagram. Uh, this switch is our normally closed uh, switch. This is a special little switch from NKK. I can't find them very easily these days, but there's actually five terminals. The three terminals on the top are the common 
the normally open and normally closed, and the two bottom ones are actually an LED that is embedded in the uh, little lens there. We won't use the LED, we'll just use the normally open and closed. Check your data sheet. Any single throw normally uh, closed switch can be used. Here's another one. I find these uh, pretty popular and easy to find. They're usually 50 cents or less, maybe even 10 cents. Uh, they come in two different styles, normally open or normally closed. The normally open are by far more common and they usually have a little red head on them. Uh, the, oftentimes the normally closed are, have a black uh, a push button on them. So when I activate it, it, it's, it initially is normally closed. I push it, it becomes normally open. Uh, there's a couple other types of switches. This is one we've used in the past also. It's a push button momentary. And this one is actually a single pole double throw, but we're only using the normally closed contacts. Uh, this little switch in here is a normally open switch. And that's very common for proto board works. The uh, relay is this little KEST or, or NAIS relay. It doesn't matter. We've used many different ones in the past. Just make sure you check the data sheet. This one is specifically designed for uh, printed circuit board operation. You can modify it a little uh, in terms of the, uh, circ uh, the mounting to make sure it fits in a breadboard nicely. Uh, the resistor LED combination is our pilot light. I have about a 2K ohm resistor there, 2.2 actually, red, 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 and that I'll use on my 12 volt system. Uh, that'll give me 5 milliamps or so of current. So the operation of the circuit is very straightforward. Our power supply is set for 12 volts because that's the relay coil, and we go to activate the relay. So when I activate it, you see the red light turn on, and you probably heard the relay click. If I press the, nor the stop button, it goes out. This circuit is a little unique in that it uses this separate contact, CR-1, to bypass the start switch. And this allows us to push the start switch button, the relay activates, closes this switch, and then that provides a path for the relay to operate or stay in operation mode. Sometimes this is called the seal in contact, seal, S-E-A-L, to, uh, to close around the start switch and that allows us to let go of the start switch and the relay stays activated. Now this is kind of a nice safety aspect because if we ever lost power to our control circuit, like that, the relay would of course go out. When I reapply power, the relay doesn't turn on automatically. So that means that if the motor, the control circuit loses power, someone must come back and initialize or reset the relay. That's a nice safety aspect of this circuit, right? And of course, any anytime you want to stop it, you press the stop button and uh, you're off to go. Uh, the um, uh, sometimes these stop buttons are wired in also with an emergency stop that uh, you'll often see in control applications. So that's the first part of the relay circuit. So we'll stop it. Now we're going to wire up the motor control, which is just going to use contacts from the relay to activate the motor circuit. The, uh, since this is a double pole, double throw relay, we can use the contacts on one side as CR-1 and we'll use the contacts on the other side as CR-2. So we'll wire that up. Okay, so I have wired the second part of the circuit, the power supply, the CR-2 contact and the motor into this, the relay circuit. So I'm using a separate power supply for the motor control. That's a nice part about relays. You can use one power supply for control, one power supply for the motor. I, in this case, it wouldn't mo matter because we have a very low power motor, but if you had a high power motor, you'd need that difference. So the wiring is very straightforward. We just use that normally open contact on the other side. And when we activate the start switch, uh, not only the light comes on, but we hear the uh, 
the, um, the motor come on, right? If I press the stop switch, of course, the motor stops. Start, stop, and we're done with that circuit. This being a logic type circuit, that's all we need is the indication for the motor operation. Now we're going to change to a uh, forward reversing type motor. Now the forward reversing motor control is a little bit more complicated because we have a couple uh, possibilities where we might get ourselves into trouble. For example, if we had the motor running forward and then we pushed a, a reversing, we don't want the motor to go from forward to ver reverse immediately. We usually want the motor to stop and then reverse. So we're actually going to build two different circuits. The first is the forward control and the second is the reverse control. We know that the motor is easily controlled from, um, from the relay starter and so we're, we're going to use a couple more relays in the circuit. Now if we look at the forward uh, circuit, it looks very similar to our previous circuit. We have a stop switch uh, and then we have a forward switch which would have been our start switch. And then we have an A coil for one of the relays and a B coil for a second relay. Now if you look at the relay circuit, you'll see relay coil A and then we see switch contact normally open A. Now that's exactly what we did before, but you'll also see a normally closed in series and that's indicated with the C for relay C. Now relay C comes from the reverse circuit. So how this circuit operates is we normally, the normal condition is as shown, the relays are unenergized. If I press the forward control, the A relay activates, which closes the seal in contact. And since the C relay was not activated, a path is, uh, is uh, for the current to flow uh, from the supply through the coil is activated. Pilot light, of course. Now, what if we want to go into the reverse condition, which is the C relay, if I try and press the button for the reverse control, you'll notice that there's an A normally closed contact in this path. So if this act relay is activated, A, that closes and this opens, which prevents any operation in the reverse direction. In order to reactivate or make active the reversing side, <coughs> I must stop the whole circuit so this can go back to its normal condition. So these cross connects, meaning A normally open, A normally closed, C normally closed, C normally open, uh, prevent the relay control from going to reverse and forward immediately. So the trick on this circuit, it's not very complicated, but you should build both circuits as before, which was the normal, uh, simple motor control circuit that we used previously. Build each circuit as its own independent uh, motor control, and then we'll use the, um, we'll put in the cross connects at the end. Now the B and D relays, are simply in parallel with the A and C relays. And you don't have to do it this way, but this is how we build the reversing circuit. Now this is a, what we call a bridge circuit because the motor, which is in the middle, bridges between both sides of, this, of the circuit. Sometimes you'll see it like this. Sometimes you'll see it with electronic components such as transistors. But in the, remember that the B relay is activated by the A relay at the same time. So when the uh, circuit starts out, you'll notice two normally opens, so the relay, the motor cannot operate. But if I activate the B relay, this closes, connecting to the power supply. The D relay, which is on the reversing side, will be in its normal condition, and so current can flow through the B contact, which was closed, through the motor, and out to the return. Re vice versa, when the D relay is activated along on the reversing side with the C, then this will close, 
and this path will be created. So current either flows down for the forward direction or up for the reverse direction. And of course the operation of the B and D are tied in with the A and C, the forward and reverse. So um, that's so now you'll notice again that the control side and the motor side are completely independent. So we'll hook that up and show that operation. We'll do this in a couple steps which I encourage you to do. Build two the separate controls and then add the cross connects later and uh, if you're using uh, A and B relays and C and D relays um, independent We'll wire them in at the very end. Okay, I have built my second motor starter relay setup. So it's basically identical to the first one. We'll review the first one. I changed my LED to be yellow instead of uh, red, just so I'd have yellow and green for forward and reverse. I activate it. I see the relay come on. It's indicated by the pilot light, and we hear the motor in the background over there. So now my second circuit is the we're going to activate this green LED, and so I activate that, and uh, I see the green LED come on. Now in this case, if I had this LED was this relay was controlling the reversing relay, then I could have both forward and reverse conditions, which we of course do not want. And so now we're going to add those cross connects. Now I encourage you to wire this up as individual wires uh, in the, um, in, in the uh, cross connects. So have a wire from the stop switch over to the initial relay circuit, starter circuit. Because if you have a wire making this path, then you can easily wire in the normally closed C contact, the normally closed A contact. So when you wire this up, make sure you use wires there. That'll make it much easier. You just pop two wires in from the normally closed contact, which is going to be done on the reverse side of the relay. Okay, so we have now wired the normally closed contact, which is on this side of the relay. That would be the A normally closed, and over here will be the C normally closed. We've wired those into those two wires that originally were feeding both motor controllers. So I've replaced that wire with a normally closed contact C and the other wire with a normally con contact on A. So here's the operation. I've disconnected the motor just so it'd be a little quieter. When I activate the A relay, I see the green light come on. So this relay has been activated. If I go to the B, uh, the B relay, and I push the button, it will no longer activate because that cross connect has now opened up and now power does not flow to this circuit. So pushing that reversing button does nothing. Actually re-pushing the forward button does nothing because it's already activated. When I push the stop button, both circuits become active through the C normally closed and A normally closed. So now I can activate this side of the circuit. Right? Now we have both the, uh, the, the reverse side working. The same condition happens. I go back to the forward and it will not activate because that close contact from the C relay is now blocking the A relay from being powered. So nothing I can do to switch from forward to reverse. In order to go to forward I have to first de-energize both circuits, now I can re-energize the A circuit, but the, B, the uh, C circuit won't work, or the reverse. Then I disable and reactivate. Now we are ready to add the B and D relays. Now the B and D relays are single pole, single throw, or you can use double pole, double throw, but we only need one side, and they will go directly in parallel with the pilot light and the um, the A relay and the C relay. Now that assumes that you have, in this case, 12 volt relays for all your control relays and the uh, A, B, C, and D relay. Okay, I have wired in my B and D relays, which are just in parallel, coil-wise, with the A and C relays. 
Now I'm doing a basic test without the motor, so I'm going to use an ohm meter. And so this ohm meter is open. We see infinite or no display. When I activate the relay, the, this is for the D relay, you'll see that the ohms go to zero. So I'm actually measuring the normally open contact on that relay. So when it's disabled, it's open. It'll take a little while to get up to maximum. But then when I activate the relay, it closes. So now I know I have my D relay operating properly. You can do the same test on the B relay. Once you have this operating, and of course everything else is still the same, that I have to deactivate that circuit before I activate the other circuit, right? That's our standard motor controller operation. For no forward and reverse at the same time, then I'm uh, ready to go. Now, the wiring on the uh, a motor circuit is a little unique. You'll notice that B and D normally open contacts are connected to either side of the motor and then connected to the power. Because remember, only one of these, the B or the D, will be active at the same time. So when we activate B, D is not allowed to activate and current can flow down through the motor and through the normally closed D contact. Vice versa, if we activate the D relay, that means the B cannot be activated and current flows up through the motor through the de-energized B normally closed contact. So the wiring is pretty straightforward because it's uh, we put the two normally closed together, at least one end of them, the other normally opens together, one end of them goes to the motor power supply and then the in, in between connections, uh, which is going to be the common, right, the common is in the middle, will go to the motor. So the two common connections from the B and the D go to the motor, and then the other two contact go off to the uh, supply. Okay, so now the two commons from this relay, which are the uh, on this side of the relay, this single pull double throw relay, there's one common and the yellow represents the other common, go over to the motor. On the input side, we've connected the yellow and orange, which are the normally opens, and the black and the red, which are the normally closed. And those go off to the motor power circuit. So here's our motor power circuit. I'll set it a little low so that we, we can watch the motor operation. So I'll go in, this I was my original forward direction. So we see the motor moving in the forward direction. The uh, yellow LED is on. Of course, if I go over to the reversing condition, nothing will happen because I cannot activate that until I push my close stop button. Reverse circuit, and the, re the motor is now going in reverse. And again, I cannot activate my forward circuit because the interlocks have stopped my motor uh, control from operating. When I've just stopped the motor, now I can run it and we can easily see. Having two separate power supplies is nice because now I can control the speed of the motor independent of the, uh, the regular control supply. And of course if this was a 120 volt motor AC, we wouldn't have be able to mix them at all. But we disable, reverse the circuit, stop, forward circuit. So that's our motor control circuit. There are some gotchas in the circuit, so uh, be careful with your wiring, particularly the interconnects, right? Remember, the A interconnect controls the C relay, and the C interconnect controls the A relay. That's the normal uh, problem that students have in the wiring. If you follow the process of doing the two independent motor starters, put in the cross connects, add the B and the D relays, the motor control relays at the end, you'll usually be able to complete this lab in a timely manner. Good luck and uh, ask me any questions if you have them.